Hi everybody, this is Mr. Nolan, and what I would like to do with you is talk about rivers and how they behave. Um, we're going to throw around the term meandering a lot in this video, and so we'll talk about what that's supposed to mean and where that term comes from. Uh, but basically, we want, we want to be able to describe and predict the behaviors of a river based on how flowing water behaves. This is called fluid dynamics. Um, Dynamics is a general term that means things changing. So if you've got fluid flowing around, such as liquid or gas or something like that, um, it behaves in really complicated ways. We're going to keep it simple in this video, uh, but we call that dynamics. It's changing, it's moving, there's a lot of behaviors going on here. So what we want to be able to do is to describe how a river is going to flow and also to predict based on what we know about fluid dynamics, how, how is that river going to continue to behave in the future. So um, let me show you a meandering river, and then we'll talk about what does meandering really mean. So this is a river, and it's meandering, so it's kind of jogging back and forth. It's almost like somebody took a piece of string and sort of carelessly tossed it on the floor. Uh, this is what we mean by meandering. It's wiggly, right? It's wiggling all over. It's like a wet noodle. Um, basically, no river flows in a straight line. There's very few of them. In certain places you can find them, but they generally don't flow in a straight line unless they're man-made, in which case that's not really a river anyway, that's a canal. Um, and so this is a meandering river, uh, and depending on where you are in the river, it might meander more or less, but basically pretty much all rivers are going to sort of jog back and forth like this. Um, and as far as the term meandering, where does that come from? Uh, let me kind of show you an example of what we mean by meandering in the context of a person. So this is a video of a person doing what I might consider meandering. Uh, so he's wandering down the street, he's kind of going back and forth, he goes back a little bit, he goes forward a little bit, he's kind of spinning around. He's certainly not moving in a straight direction. Uh, and so this is probably what we would consider to be meandering. So meandering is just sort of like wandering back and forth, and so in the context of a river, that's where we get meandering from. Um, and if you look at this particular image, uh, something should pop out. Do you notice something kind of interesting down here in this aerial view of this, this river? Take a look for a moment. You can pause if you need to. So if you look really carefully, you'll notice that there's some weird curves, um, sort of kind of what appears to be below or south of this river, some curves. Um, and I wonder if these are actually where the river used to be at one time. Uh, so we can see these sort of curves. Um, and this might have to do with that meandering behavior of the river, that we can see that there's these weird curves of what, what it looks like where that river used to be. Um, we can actually find uh, examples in which little bits and pieces of a river have sort of been pinched off. Um, and so if you look at these uh, sort of little loops of the river that are not connected to the river anymore. Um, these are really interesting. Uh, it looks as though these used to be connected to the river, and there's a name for these. Um, they're called oxbow lakes. And so here's an aerial view of an oxbow lake right here. Uh, it used to be part of this river, this meandering river, but it has been cut off. It has been pinched away. Um, and uh, this is really sort of interesting, and it, and it is living proof that rivers are dynamic. They change, they evolve, they they you know, they, they really change throughout their, their lives on the scale of hundreds and thousands, maybe even millions of years. Um, you know, rivers are, are a changing dynamic system. Now, we'll get into uh, what kind of creates those oxbow lakes in a moment, but I want to talk to you about a particular technology. I'm going to show you some slides. Um, this is kind of some, uh, it's been around for a little while, but it's getting kind of uh, a second wind right now because it's finding a lot of really important uses in geology uh, and urban planning and things. It's called LIDAR. Uh, it stands for Light Detection and Ranging. You might notice it sounds like RADAR. That's because it's a similar acronym. Instead of radio dete uh, detection uh, or distance and ranging, it's, uh, it's using lasers. And so it's actually a lot more precise. Um, so we can use this really precise measuring tool. We can use it to shine down from aircraft or maybe from satellites. Um, and we can measure a surface really precisely by using this LIDAR technology. And so I want to show you a little bit uh, some of these images. Um, and I want you to keep in mind, um, you know, these, these images that we've already seen, uh, these are uh, LIDAR images of, of these, you know, sorts of things. So we can get a more precise look um, at what's really going on here with LIDAR. So first of all, this is kind of us zooming into a bend in a river. So we can see this is the river and, and this is the bend. Notice that the inside uh, curve, the inside bend of the river, there's a big blob of sediment here. And on the outside bend of this river, it's almost like it's cut away a little bit. Um, and so one thing we can deter determine from this right away, and we actually saw this in our stream tables in the lab, uh, is that on the outside bend of a river, you get erosion. You get cutting away the river while the water will actually 
cut away its sediment. But over here at the inside bend, the river will actually deposit sediment. This is a big blob. This whole thing is a big blob of sediment that that river has, has actually deposited. Um, and so we can talk about why this is. But let me show you a few more images from, from Lit a LIDAR. Uh, this one might be a little bit hard to see on your screen, but this black ribbon running through the river through here is the current river. And all these white, funny little uh, lighter colored folds are, are slightly raised and lowered elevations. And so we can actually use these to indicate where that river has been over the course of its life. Here's another image. We can see this bright white ribbon is the river. And all these sort of slightly dimmer ones are, are um, slightly raised or lowered elevations where that river used to be. So these are sort of like fingerprints or footprints of where that river was compared to what it is. And if you look really click carefully, you can kind of kind of imagine it sort of sort of bending in one direction and then bending in another. Uh, here's, a, here's a beautiful, beautiful, sort of very dendritic looking river. Uh, it's moving from the right to the left. Um, so we can see all these tributaries to the river here sort of feeding into it. And this is the really, as it starts to become uh, a larger river, you can see all these, these sediments that were deposited. So this, this part of the river has actually been moving north. Um, it's, it's cutting <coughs> out that way and it's been depositing on its inside curve. We can sort of see this over here with some of these smaller pieces too. On this inside curve it's been depositing and out here we see less of that deposition so it's probably cutting in that direction. Uh, if we, you know, we could really zoom in on some of this and look and find that same pattern at just about any point in this river. Um, so we can see these, these, these old sediments that are being left by the river over time even though it only occupies a small area. It's actually been it has showed up at, at all these other ones. Here's another really good one. This river has just swung all over uh, its, uh, its river uh, uh, floodwater area. Um, and so you can see all these, these you know, ancient areas where this river used to be. So why is this? Why do rivers meander? Well, um, when we uh, jumped over here uh, and looked at uh, this image, we saw that on the outside curve, uh, that it was cut away, and on the inside curve it was deposited. And uh, if you think about it, on that outside curve, the water as it's flowing, it has to cover a greater distance uh, in the same amount of time, whereas this water on the inside has to cover a shorter distance in the same amount of time. So that water on the outside curve, because it has to cover more distance, it's moving faster, it's a greater velocity. The, the water on the inside is covering a shorter distance, and so it's moving at a slower velocity. One thing that we have seen is that uh, water that moves faster is erosive. Water that moves faster will actually erode um, the sediments, whereas water that's moving slower will deposit sediments. This is a theme that shows up in geomorphology all the time. Fast moving water erodes, slow moving water deposits. And it gets more complicated than that, but that's kind of uh, a very big idea here. So if we imagine this, this image here, this, this diagram, if we look at this bend, B is at the inside of the bend, and over here, um, this is on, or I'm sorry, B is the inside of the bend, and then this is the outside of the bend. And if we look at our water flow, uh, if we look down here, this is, this is location B, uh, what we see is that on the right side, where that water has a greater distance to travel, we get a faster flow of water. And on the inside, where the water has a smaller distance to travel, we get a slower flow. And so what really ends up happening is that at the inside of that curve, where the yellow is, that's deposition. On the outside of that curve, we get erosion. And you don't have to know the shape of this channel necessarily, but this is kind of how those channels are shaped. They're steep on the outside, and they're shallow on the inside, and that's exactly why we see things like this. Steep on the outside, shallow on the inside, and that's because we have have um, all of this, uh, this, this beautiful deposition happening on the inside curve and then erosion happening on the outside curve. So uh, oxbow lakes, let's kind of uh, jump back here and let's kind of take a glance at them again. Remember, this is an oxbow. This is a piece of the river that has sort of been pinched off. And so I want to show you uh, an image here. This is a pretty nice sequence of, of images. Uh, if we imagine we're starting over here with River A, right? Kind of a gently, gently meandering river. Over time, those inside banks are going to deposit and the outside banks are going to erode. As long as you have a curved bank, it will do that, right? The river will meander. This is a really heavily meandered river and you know what's interesting is that these rivers can meander so much that if we look over here um, this this portion of the river uh, has actually meandered right into another piece of the river. As soon as that happens and the water has a smaller distance that it can travel, it's more efficient to do that, that river will now start to cut through 
uh, where there used to be sediment, and it will cut off this bend of the river, this this big meander over here, and that's when we get what's called an oxbow lake. Um, and so we, uh, we we get now this this sort of cut off, isolated chunk of the river, um, and the river has now begun a new course. And so as the river, and we can see another one is about to happen right here. So if we jump over here, uh, what we can imagine is that we're about to get an oxbow lake right here because this part of the river is cutting. Uh, downward, this part of the river is cu cutting upward, eventually they're going to meet, and this river is actually going to adopt a new shape. And I'm going to draw that on here so you can kind of see what is this river going to do, maybe in just a few dozen years. So this is what this current river currently looks like. This is the current path of this river. Um, and once this oxbow is, is uh, cut off, we're going to end up with this channel, right? We're going to end up with this channel. This river is actually going to cut into itself, and then this part's going to become isolated. We can see that already happened over here. This probably used to be an oxbow lake that's actually got filled in with sediment. So eventually a lake will you know, fill in with sediment over time. Um, but uh, we used to have this, or we have this currently, and then eventually we're going to get that. And so rivers will always seek the shortest distance uh, to, to, to flow. That's why we get these weird uh, oxbow lakes um, showing up in, in uh, whoops, we don't, we don't need him. Uh, we get these oxbow lakes showing up in, in these random places near these rivers. They get cut off. So this right here was a cutoff. This river was meandering way out here, but it actually meandered right into itself and actually cut off. And we can see it's about to do that again. It's about to get another cutoff. So I bet this is going to turn into another oxbow uh, as soon as these you know, as soon as these uh, these join. So rivers are dynamic. They're always changing. Uh, and this is why we get these um, really bizarre, intricate, um, you know, uh, patterns all along a river is because they're constantly bending and they're creating oxbows and cutoffs. Um, so even though we only see a single river channel uh, today, uh, there's a whole bunch of other places where that river used to be. Um, and so this is really what we mean by dynamics, right? The river is always changing. So let's talk consequences. Let's talk about what's what's important about this. So imagine that we're at this stage in the river, right? So I'm going to go ahead and crop this a little bit. Imagine that we're at this stage in in this river. Uh, we have you know it's meandering a, a lot, um, and uh, and we've built a house right here, right here. We've got this this house on our river, um, and uh, this really has uh, very significant consequences for us because what this means is that if my house is situated right here. Uh, you might say to yourself, nobody's going to build their house there, but they do. I mean, people do that all the time. Um, so if here's my river, if my river is, is meandering, remember, it's cutting out this bank. It's actually cutting right here, and it's depositing here. So if I build my house here, this river is going to meander into my house. It's going to undercut it. The house is basically going to fall into the river. This is really very serious. It's a very serious problem that civil engineers have to deal with. You're much better off placing your house somewhere over here um, because this, you know, the river has already meandered out of the way and now it's just depositing there. So your house is probably fine here. It's not OK if it's right here. So this is a better place to build your house. But let's say that, you know, oh, we're really committed to building our house here. Let's say that that's the case. Well, what can we do to prevent the loss of our house? Um, we can use an obstruction. I'm kind of going to blast through this really quickly. But we can actually use obstructions to change the flow of the river right here. That way we can try to protect our dwelling. So let me show you what I mean. So what we can do uh, to, to protect our house, right, if we're silly enough to put our house right here on the outside bend of this river, um, we can make use of obstructions. Um, and that's because obstructions change the dynamics of the water. They change the way the water flows. Um, so uh, you could put rocks there. This is a really a, a time-honored uh, way to protect the outside curve of a river because rocks disrupt the flow of the water and create what's called an eddy. Um, they kind of look like this. They're little swirls. Um, we could get all into the physics of this, but the important thing is that a, an obstruction like a rock is going to change, it's going to divert the flow of the water, it's going to deflect it, and basically slow it down. And so there are actually uh, these structures, they're called Gabion River Walls, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and uh, you can see that uh, this, uh, this landowner has placed a Gabion River Wall all along the outside bend of this river. Um, and what this wall does, it, it's kind of a no-duh moment, like, well, no-duh, they're going to build a wall there. But this, the object here is not to necessarily stop the water, it's to slow it down. So the water, when it flows, has to flow through all these rocks. It's actually a cage filled with rocks. And so mo more importantly than just stopping the water, these rocks are slowing it down um, because of all this turbulence. They create this turbulence. So this is just a big wall filled with turbulence. It slows down the water. And now on the outside curve of that river, instead of getting erosion, you get deposition. Um, and so you're more likely to protect you know, your property if you were to build it right there. 
So um, we really could have gotten well into the weeds here, um, but I hope that you know, you're able now to describe and predict the behaviors of a river based on how that, that water behaves.